This is something nobody ever talks about. And on a national level, I think this really is the key to why the black community is in such a bad, bad state. What am I talking about? I'm talking about depression for stay-at-home moms. Now, you're going to say, well, they're not really stay-at-home moms. Those are single mothers. Well, yes, it's, it's single mothers. But it's, it's not to the degree that you actually think because the, the statistics are completely wrong. They're a lie. But there is a problem. And people have con convinced black women that it is okay to not have a man. The impact that this has that I'm about to discuss is that these women end up dead or worse, killing their children. I'm going to read to you a little bit of a blog that one woman did. A friend of mine has worked almost her whole life. Even in elementary school, she helped her parents keep their restaurant going. So it was quite a shock to her when she had to stay home for three weeks while she changed jobs. Quote, it was boring, she said. I would get up and not even shower all day. And she stayed in that sad state until her husband finally asked how long it had been since she washed her hair. My friend doesn't have children yet, but she questioned me about being a stay-at-home mom. Quote, I just can't live that way, she said. I would get so depressed. It can de be depressing to be a stay-at-home mom, especially if you live the way my friend was living. No contact with people, no hobbies or interest, and too much TV. I remember when I first came home with my son, I was definitely busy taking care of my little baby, but I was also definitely depressed. I often felt useless to the world, left out of society, boxed in, or imprisoned at home. Every day was the same thing, get up, feed baby, put baby to sleep, read about baby, clean house, while I have the chance, feed baby, change baby, on and on and on until I fell asleep that night. There were lots of tears and feelings of loneliness, but then I got three pieces of advice that helped change my attitude from gloomy to glad. Now, what is my position on this? My position is that this is a, here's the facts. Stay at home moms get depressed, period, right? It's the married women who actually have an outlet when daddy comes home or hubby i don't know what you want to call him when hubby comes home he then brightens up the stay-at-home mom's day and let's go back to the 50 hubby would buy wifey the mink coat the pearls and once a week take her out to dinner she doesn't have to cook she has doesn't have to wash dishes nothing she is dressed and ready to go when he gets home they get the babysitter comes over and they go out and have fun Friday night, Saturday night, and there she's she's got her outlet twice a week. So she doesn't feel isolated. She doesn't feel worthless. She doesn't feel useless. The brain feeds upon itself. I'm pretty much am alone in this very large house by myself for many, many hours. My roommate goes and leaves for sometimes weeks at a time. Stuff that happened in my childhood gnaws at me. I keep my sanity by telling myself, that doesn't matter. That happened in my childhood. I'm a grown man now. That None of that matters. I know I'm just, I literally have to tell myself, I know this is just feeding upon. That's what the brain does. We want to be good people, but we dwell on the negative sometimes. But I'm not a negative person. I'm a very positive person. Literally, I can walk into a store that I go into regularly. And if I am not smiling, they will say, what is wrong? And then I'll smile and say, oh, nothing. I was just thinking about something serious. But these are people who are basically strangers. They're not friends. But because they, they can feel my aura and know that I am a good person, that I am a happy person, they assume that I should be happy all the time. And if I'm not 100% happy walking through the door, they can feel that, right? This is an epidemic. And here's the crux of why I think this whole feminism thing is terrible. They have convinced black women who are not even a part of that crap that having a man is bad. There's a lot of man-hating that goes along with the third wave of feminism. And because of this, 
the unintended consequences is that you're going to have at the most serious level women killing themselves or women killing their children. If you do not have a mate, and all the religions say this, and, and the religions actually come from men. It's And it comes from men who have sat down somewhere, somehow, some man has sat down and said, I have observed that a man and a woman together having children is a good thing, period. So as the beginning of a lot of religions, that's at the very beginning of their religion. Man, woman, have children, good. Humans continue, good. Man, only one woman, good. It helps everybody concentrate on what they must do outside of that monogamous relationship. Now, there's a lot of people who, who today goes, oh, oh, philosophically, men need more women. Philosophically, women need more men. Not the basic, basic philosophy of it all. One man, one woman, have the child, good. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss, right? Now, you have these women who, first of all, don't even actually consciously think about the men that they are going after. So they end up with a horrible, terrible, awful man. And first of all, let's set the record straight. She's nothing to write home about anyway, right? So then she gets with a ratchet girl, gets with a ratchet man. And then the ratchet girl, because our society says that, oh, women are supposed to be special. Well, they are supposed to be special, but they're supposed to be special. They're supposed to be present themselves as special. You're not you're not special because you have a vagina. You're special because you are supposed to be the special gender. You have the children. But you can't put the the carrot before the cart and the horse in back of the cart. You know, you're just mixing everything up. You're supposed to be special. Carry yourself special. Get with a special man. Have children then the man is going to take care of your every need. And these ratchet women get with the ratchet man, and because he's ratchet, he's not gonna take care of any of her needs. And then she's gonna get upset at him. No, it was you to begin with. You don't care about yourself, so you went with somebody who doesn't care about you either. So now, she's bitter, and let's say that repeats. It can happen even once, and she's bitter. Two or three times, you know, and then they all get into a group, and misery loves company. These men are nothing, these men are nothing. Well, you're nothing, actually. Let's 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 not mince words here. You're nothing. You're a ratchet woman to begin with. You never carried yourself as a lady, and hating on the man isn't solving any problems. Now you're with these these other miserable people. Now you're single because you gave no thought to any of this. You have a child. Now you're on welfare, food stamps, WIC, what have you, Medicaid. Now you don't need a man, legally speaking, and in fact. You are admonished from having a man. You're, you're not incapable of having a man because it would reduce your payout with welfare or whatever. And, and listen to that. The stipulation is that she can't have a man. The assumption is if she has a man, that man is going to provide for the family. So automatically having a man around negates the state's responsibility of paying her, although she's qualified to get social services. Everybody sees it the opposite way, but the, the real way is that the state recognizes that a man provides for his woman. It's just as ingrained in a man as taking care of a man is ingrained in a woman. But this whole feminism thing has run roughshod over logic, and, the, and you're now suffering the unintended consequences of this thing, of this whole man-hating mantra, man-hating political stance, that men are nothing. You don't need a man. The state is gonna take care of you. The state is not gonna take care of you. Is the state gonna come home at night and rub your feet? Is the state gonna come home at, at night and rub, uh, rub cocoa butter all over you? Yes, men do this. Husbands do this. Is the state a loving husband? No, you're told constantly, you don't need a man, you don't need a man, you don't need a man. Yes, you do. These women are going crazy because they don't have a man and even the ones with men even the ones with husband teeter on the brink of depression clinical depression it takes a loving husband to realize recognize this and to prevent this what's the prevention loving the wife taking the wife out making sure that she's a part of society she's got her own friends that's the one thing that i always say when i get married when i get married i want a woman 
who is independent doesn't isn't needy she has her own thing going yes i want a wife but i want somebody who thinks somebody who has her own friends oh i'll, I'll give her a hundred dollars for ladies girls night out that's that's fine I, i'm a-okay with that i'm not i'm not okay with like my friend who had a girlfriend and she called him every five minutes and would tell him that now of course he's stupid he's he can't come visit me that he hasn't seen in months at a time oh i have to go she's crying she's crying you you just left her and she's crying are you is her vagina that freaking important to you that you can't even hang out with friends for five minutes i don't i don't, I don't get that and i'm a pretty shallow person I don't hang around anybody ugly, even my guy friends. Yes, I'm just that shallow. So we're not talking about somebody's ugly who doesn't have any other options. And this just one wasn't one, just one friend. I mean, a lot of my good looking guy friends just like that. They have this mentality of they can't get some other one. I don't, I don't know what's going on. But the unintended consequence of the feminism, which, which has a lot of man hating that is ascribed to the actual political agenda. And, and, and look at this the whole striving to make sure that the man doesn't get custody of the child at all not even visitation rights you know they're jumping up and cheering and how much how victorious they are when in reality that's the very thing that renders the woman crazy insane taking her life taking the life of the child or maybe it's intended i'm saying unintended consequences maybe it's intended this is serious and all of these people about men going their own way, I was, no, no. I'm sure I'm going to look up some stat and it's going to say all of these single men are also taking their lives somewhere. I don't even have to look. 83% of all suicides are by men. That is a staggering statistic. That is outrageous. Now you would think that it would be somewhere around 50-50, right? Right? But apparently men are under such pressure at work needing to provide i read a story about a guy who literally would leave home every day and go sit in a park he had been fired he didn't tell his wife his children and so every day she made him a lunch he took the lunch and he went to the park and sat and when they asked so what are you gonna do he says i don't know what to do now, i don't know if that ended up him taking his life but i could see that very easily i could see that right he's under such pressure and this whole western shaming it's not like it's not like uh japanese shaming this western shaming is far worse i believe that a japanese husband would tell the wife immediately and they would all work for him to get another job you know you know they're 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 very team oriented over in japan but 83 percent of men 83 percent of the people that commit suicide are men i could only assume that a big portion of that of that are single men and men who can't provide who are under such pressure pressures to provide for the family and they can't do it in this economy i know about wall street they jump out the windows all the time when they lose money i mean it's just money they made it one day they can make it another day but they're jumping out the window because it's so much they they they're hopeless right that's the terminology this whole modern all of these little modern groups working against each other are having these unintended consequences of the entire fabric of the society completely unraveling people murdering their children people committing suicide and i think i think you're going to see this statistic raise on that 17 percent women committing suicide or 17 percent of people committing suicide is women or female and that's going to raise in steadily and more and more as more women become single mothers right because at the end of the day a man can literally walk away from parenthood a, a woman just can't and women have fought so hard to make sure that they are the the parent another unintended consequence so now as a woman you can't walk away from being a parent unless you forcefully tell a judge no i don't want to be the parent at all you can't walk away from being a parent and the depression and the potential of you committing suicide or you killing off your children there was a story just last week and i and i think i did the video on it the woman killed her children put them in the freezer and collected child support from the father continuously these are the consequences of this entire third wave feminism that tells you you don't need a man you're liberated you're an independent woman 
you can do anything a man can do. You can't do anything a man can do. In, f in fact, there is not even a comparison between men and women. There just is not. Until such time as you're actually raised as a man, you're not going to be anywhere even near equal to a man. And nowhere and no how, no shape, form, or fashion will you ever be as strong as a man. I already told you that the strongest woman in the world was defeated in an arm, rest, arm wrestling competition by an average man. Strongest woman in the world. There is no comparison. These are all intended unintended consequences of all of these political movements ah oh, blah blah i want this i want this i want this one we need to go back to simple black people we need to go back to simple one man one woman have a child be loving to each other and and i i made a few videos like this and i've said this constantly don't marry for love because that's not going to get you anywhere marry because it's a good match because you can fall in love with a thug right you can fall in love with a, a criminal, right? What is that going to get you in life? Steve Hardy, Harvey made a book called Think Like a Man, but he's talking about all this, all this crap, and it's all pandering to women. I'm telling you, think like a queen. Think like a princess. But you have to bring something to the table. You're not just out automatically a princess, right? When he steps through the door at the end of the day after earning his keep, and bringing home a paycheck. What are you doing for him? Just looking pretty? You got a boob job? That's it? That, no, because I I swear to you, when you turn 40, all of that's going to be over. All of that's going to be, I mean, that's not even 40, th about 32. All of that's going to be over. And you're not even going to feel like doing any of that. Are you two a good match? And that's something that you have to consciously think about. You don't go to the club and put on your lipstick and your mini dress and go, oh, I'm going to get me a good man. No, that's <laughs> no, that's not the way. If you're going to go to a club, you're there to dance, listen to music, and to socialize, and that's it. When you want a husband, you go somewhere completely different. Am I right? Maybe college. Oh, I know a lot of white girls who go to college looking for a husband. They're graduating in underwater basket weaving, but they're not there to even get a degree they're there to get a husband i i know it i've i've seen it i've i know they've been there are books written about it because what are they looking for they're looking for a real potential husband material they're not going to the club they're going to the college because that's where to really get them be they a basketball player or and, and you don't really date the basketball player you you date the pro basketball player right or this engineer guy the science guy the geeky guy the guy that's gonna be the next Bill Gates. Consciously think about what you're doing when you're uh, going for a man. I know a lot of women come onto my channel and say, you hate women. I don't hate anybody. Or I hate everybody equally. <laughs> however you want however you want to look at it. But I, I just get sick and tired of people not thinking, thinking about the consequences of their decisions. He got me pregnant. No, no, he didn't get you pregnant. That's what you need to erase from your mind. He didn't get you pregnant. You got you pregnant. Don't you know the birds and the bees? If you lay with a man, you're gonna be end up pregnant. So he didn't get you pregnant, you got you pregnant. And that's, I know that's a hard line and that's not popular. And that's why my but woman viewership has gone from 30% down to 17% because nobody wants to talk to you like this. Nobody wants to say just the basic, basic philosophy. One man, one woman, kid, good he didn't make you pregnant you made you pregnant he can't make you pregnant from across the room he can't make you pregnant in his house he can't make you pregnant in his state the only way he makes you pregnant is you lay down underneath him naked and allow him to do his stuff you have the power and i want you to make a conscious decision because these unintended consequences are going to be there you know there's postpartum depression now the psychologist have said that occurs in every single woman the severity of it varies with the woman some women can shrug it off other women murder their babies and there's a, a scale in between all of that from from that extreme to the complete non-extreme postpartum depression happens in every single and every time you have because i have a baby right every time you give birth that's because those hormones are going through you right and they probably the humans probably needed that because they didn't live in houses what hundreds of thousands of years ago right they didn't live in houses so you have the baby pick the baby up and you kept traveling and you needed those hormones to keep you going traveling you just gave birth 
right? You just did something pretty traumatic to your body and your body is saying, okay, well, we know that uh, humans travel. So what we're going to do is we're going to pump out those hormones so that she can keep going, right? Have the baby, give birth to the baby, pick it up, keep walking. Because we got another hundred miles to go because the ice is coming or the drought is coming, whatever, you know? But we don't live like that anymore, but our bodies are still programmed like that. Some women can shrug that off and keep going. And someone, some women murder their babies. Now, let me tell you something personal. My mother told me that. She said when she had me at one point, she was overcome with emotion and she thought about taking me as, a, as an infant and slamming me against the wall. Now I, now, I think she's an evil person anyway, but understanding the complete context of everything that she said, it was postpartum depression. Luckily, she shrugged it off, but she did remember that that's how she felt. Now, there are some women, women are under pressure just like men are under pressure, but women are under pressure on the other, uh, on the other spectrum. It's not that they have to provide anything, it's the shame of this modern society that says sex is freedom. Sex is freedom. You having sex is your freedom. That's why Islam is the fastest growing religion, actual religion in the United States because women want the structure of Islam. Because Islam says, no, you can't have go around having sex with everybody. You can't have sex with every Tom, Dick and Harry. And women want that structure. And they want a husband that is structured who goes off, makes money, comes home, brings the paycheck, and takes care of the family. But the pressure that the woman goes through is, is if she lives in this modern society where the, that says sex is freedom, if she, and even if she does have an abortion, the, the both are true. Having the abortion doesn't even wipe away any sort of conscious about the child at all. And in, in fact, it increases the likelihood that a woman will commit suicide because the reality is she did in fact murder her unborn child and that guilt eats at her until she commits suicide and there are women who have uh, been literally brought to tears instantaneously about an abortion that they had 40 50 60 years ago it's it's right there on the surface that that pressure is right there on the surface so even having an abortion isn't the answer and then if she's alone single mom she has a baby right how many women have killed their children because they were ashamed huh? how many right you you know the scenario she gets pregnant she discovers she's pregnant she goes off and hides somewhere. Family doesn't know where she is. Nobody knows where she is. She goes off, has the baby, and then what does she do? Has the baby and kills the baby, and then come back and act like nothing ever happened. These are the unintended consequences of this modern political, uh, oh, we have to be equal. We have to, you're, you will never be equal. Just give that up. That's not a valid, logical argument. And you are causing far more harm than any good there have been women congressmen from day one almost right there were women congressmen women engineers women scientists in the 1600s right 1600s 1700s women have done things way before any of this uh, we need a feminist movement to come along but women have pressures too just like men have pressures women have pressures too and this sh this shame that the woman feels leads to very drastic things and i'm not even talking about being in the house i'm talking about these pressures these these societal pressures that you should not have a baby out of wedlock i'm saying you shouldn't but i'm saying that you need to figure this out before all of this happens Right? I want you to make a conscious, conscious decision before all of this happens and say, okay, I'm going to consciously look for a good man, but I'm going to make myself a good woman so that I will attract a good man. You can't bring, be a drama queen and expect to have a good man because a good man is going to leave you dead in the dust as soon as he even gets a whiff of that and you don't want to be in a relationship where you hit him he hits you no no that doesn't work out and they just did a study that says nagging wives kill men and i'm not talking about there that they hit him and beat him to death i'm talking about heart disease heart uh, high blood pressure kills men they just came out with a study on what was the uh, one of those shows today? Good Morning America, whatever. They just did the study, and they say men 
are even under pressure when the wife is stressed out. Meaning not even when she is arguing with him, just when she herself is stressed out. Remember, that's 83% of the people who commit suicide are men. That's from stress and all other things, societal. You have to really be conscious about and look at what's going on. Don't just, oh yeah, men are nothing. Why in the world would you say that doesn't make sense? First of all, you need to judge each individual differently. I did date a girl and she was like, oh my God, you, you have your own place. Oh, you, you have a car. I was, I'm like, what were you used to? What's going on? And then, uh, you know, well, you know, can't be dating somebody. Like <laughs> can't be dating somebody like that, right? Remember I said the scenario of why would why would I date a, uh, a, a hoochie mama or a, or a, a ratchet? Well, you know, I take her out to dinner and she's amazed at the tablecloth and that the silverware is silverware on the on the table. What in the world would I talk about with a lady such like that or a woman like that? You have to make a conscious decision of how you're going to conduct your life. Nobody sits down and says this to anybody. You know, they, you don't see this on TV. You don't hear this on the radio. You don't see this in commercials. You definitely don't see this in movies. Sex is not free. There are consequences to everything. I would that black people would get married because when black people get married, it completely changes our entire life. All for the better. The percentages are with me on the good that marriage does for black people. For other people, not so good. Thank you for watching the Shikama Live Show.